Okay, so in this example, we're going to take two drawings and put them into one file, or one AutoCAD drawing. And they have different scales, but you can see that they are very small drawings, so we're going to use an A size title block. Okay, so let's start with the top drawing. Create a rectangle. And the dimensions of that rectangle is 2.25, comma, 0.75. Let's go ahead and put a circle right at the geometric center. So I'll choose circle center diameter. Shift and right click, geometric center. Click on the geometric center and the diameter is 0.125. Let's choose chamfer. Let's go to distance. 0.125. It's going to be the same distance as the other one since the angle is 45. And this time I'm going to choose the polyline option. And I'll select the entire polyline. I'll draw a line to connect the endpoints to this one, and the same on the other end. Okay, next I'll go ahead and start creating my next drawing. That one starts with a circle center diameter, and the diameter is 1.5. I'll create a line from this center, half of the 1.95. So let's start with the line command. I'll turn ortho on. Click at this endpoint. And now I want to go up that distance. If you don't want to use the calculator function, you can type in 195 divided by 200. Escape. Let's go ahead and offset that line to both sides. Half of what our thickness is. So we're going to offset the distance of 0.125. One going that way, and then let's offset this line going this direction. Next I'll create a circle, center radius. From this end point to that end point. Let's go ahead and erase this line here and then trim the rest. So I'll trim this off, these two portions, and then escape. Polar Array, select this object, choose this center, tell it that we have eight. My associativity in this case I do want turned off so make sure that's not blue. Close the array and then trim the portions in between. Okay. We're going to create this using paper space, so I can go ahead and skip the line type scale option when I'm using paper space, and I'll go right to the center layer. But before I do that, I have to have my layer so I'll have to insert the title block into layout 1. So go to layout 1. Let's insert our A size title block by using the classic insert command. Browse to wherever you keep your A size title block. Okay, everything is unchecked. Then select OK. If you want your page to match your title block, I'll right click on layout 1 and choose page setup manager. I'll choose modify. In this drop down, I will choose the DWG to PDF. Then I will choose ANSI full bleed, A size 11 by 8.5. Extents. Center plot, set this to monochrome, 
Then I'll choose OK and then close. Let's jump back to the Model tab. Now let's put our center marks and center lines on. So let's use the center layer command. Set the value equal to center. Jump to the annotation tab. Choose center line. Click the top and then the bottom line. Select that center line and go ahead and put your squares on the midpoints of the outside line. Choose center mark and select your circle. On this circle, I'll go back to the center mark command and I'll select my outside arc. That will create that circle. And now I have to create a line of the same size as this one. So I'll create a line from this center or midpoint out to that midpoint. I need to adjust my line out to this distance. So I'll choose lengthen, delta, and to set my distance, I'm going to select this midpoint. So I'll click that one to that endpoint, and that gives me the distance that I need. And then I'll extend that line. Okay, so I'll use match properties, select my center line, and then that line. Let's jump back to the Layout tab. So now we can adjust this any way we like it. If we want them on top of each other, let's go ahead and create a middle line right between the midpoint between this line here and this top line. So I'll draw a line. I'll shift and right click and choose mid between two points. Select this endpoint and then this endpoint. And draw that line right across to where it perpendiculars to here. I'll select this line and I'll put it on the center layer. I'll adjust one of my viewports or this top viewport to fit inside of this top box. Double click on the inside of that viewport to have it activated and then I'll move this into position. One thing I should have done was go ahead and put my viewport on the correct layer. So what I'm going to do in order to select it is that I'm going to select both of these. Do a right click and go to properties. And then I will isolate my viewport by selecting in this drop down the word viewport. Underneath layers I'll put it on the VP layer. Then I'll go back to the block reference, which is my title block. And then I'll set my scale, in this case, to varies. For this one, let's go ahead and name it Multiple VP. Just to let me know that I do have multiple viewports in this drawing. Okay. So now I'll double click on the inside of this one here at the top. I can see my scale is really close to the 1.25. So remember I can use the zoom command. So Z enter 1.25. And you have to put the XP to make it zoom to that scale. I think I may be able to get away with making this 1.5. So let's see what that one looks like. So I'll go back to zoom. Choose S for scale. 1.5 XP. And that should get me a little bit closer than what I need. So I'm happy with that size of it. <clears throat> Maybe we can try 1.75 now that I think about it. Just to be on a good safe side. So Z enter 
S enter one point seven five XP even better. Okay, so I'm just gonna pan this up. I'll check and make sure that my scale is still set to 1.75. Let's go ahead and lock this viewport. Let's create another viewport by going to the word layout. Rectangular. Select that endpoint. Going down to this endpoint. Okay, just like I did with the other one, I'm going to double click to the outside to unactivate the viewport. I'll put a window across and select both of these. And then I'll isolate the viewport and put it on the correct layer. Let's double click back inside of this box. I'm going to pan this shape over. It looks like this one is set to 1.5, so I'll go to Z enter. S enter 1.5 XP. Okay, so if your other object is showing up, what you can do is that I'll double click on the outside of this one, select my viewport, and then I'll close this window in some. Just so I make sure that I don't see that other object that was poking out. Okay, so next let's go ahead and, and one good thing about having these on viewports, you can see that these are at different scales. But the viewport is what drives the dimension, size, and things of that nature. So you'll see that when we go ahead and create our dimensions. Let's jump to annotate. And then let's choose dim. And we do have two different dimension styles. So we have one that has two places and the other one that has three places. So let's go ahead and go to dimension. And I'm going to create my top one first. To get this dialog box, remember you can type in D enter or you can click the down arrow. Choose modify. Underneath the lines, I'll leave it the way it is. Symbols and arrows. Turn my center marks to none. Text height. 0.125 fit scale we're using paper space so leave it set to one and then the primary units in this case is going to be three decimal places we do have our leading zeros on so we're going to leave that suppression alone select ok and then close let's go ahead and dimension our top one so I'll choose linear Go ahead and dimension between these two endpoints. You can use the baseline option. Remember that you're going to have to go to select. Since I selected that line first, and select that endpoint, and then place it at that endpoint. Choose linear again. Be careful. Make sure that you're picking these endpoints and not the endpoints of your dimensions. So I'll pick between these two. Okay, escape. Let's go ahead and make sure that we put our diameter symbol on this one. So select it. In the properties window, scroll down till you see the word primary units. Underneath the prefixes, go ahead and put in percent percent %c. Let's go ahead and put in our diameter dimension. So I'll choose diameter click here and then place it next I got the option to either choose a multi-leader or I can use a regular quick leader I choose a multi-leader this time remember we have to set up a style for it first so select the down arrow here choose modify now I'll start with the leader format tab everything in this one is okay I have a straight leader line that's on the front. Arrow sizes are the same as my other that are set up in my dimension style. This landing, I usually like to change it to match the same height as my text. The scale, we're using paper space, so leave it set to 1. Underneath contents, this is where I will adjust my text height to be the exact same as my drawing. 
or that I set up in my dimension style. Choose OK and then close. Now use a multi leader, select this endpoint. I'll turn ortho off. Go ahead and place where you want that leader at, and then start typing in your information, which is 2x.125 by 45% percent D. And I use dollar sign, sorry, percent percent D will give me my degree symbol. Go ahead and close this. I use match properties. Select my diameter dimension. And then select my multiliter. On to the bottom one. Let's go ahead and create another dimension style that has two decimal places. So underneath the annotation, clicking the down arrow, I have the standard one highlighted, I'll choose new. It's going to start with that one, and I'm just going to call it 2DIC, sorry, DEC for two decimal places. Continue. And everything in this is going to be the same except for underneath the primary units. We're going to set it equal to two decimal places. And in this case, we will suppress the leading zero. I'll go ahead and close those two boxes. I choose a diameter symbol on this one. And we'll come back and adjust this later. Choose linear. And I'm going to choose this endpoint down to this endpoint. And that's where I'll place my dimension. Let's do another linear. On this endpoint to this endpoint, we have an angle dimension, so choose angular. And I'll choose my two center lines and place it here. I do have another text that says eight places. We already set up our multi leader. So I can select the multi-leader. I need to select somewhere on that arc. So I'll shift and right click and choose nearest. Select a position on the arc. And then I'll place my dimension. Or my multi-leader. To 8x. Okay, so looking back at our diameter dimension. I want to keep this and I want to keep the lines going right across. So what I'm going to do is go back and modify my dimension style. Notice that I'm on the two decimal places. I'll choose modify. And then underneath the fit tab, I have a fit option here. Usually I like to keep this on best fit, but in this case, it's going to ask me that if I don't have enough room, what do I want to kick out first? And in this case, I want the text to leave. So select text. Go to OK. And go to close. Now you're going to see that this text is going to automatically adjust with that line in between it. Let's go back to our match properties. I'll select my text on my dimension here and then match my multi leader to it. Last thing I need to do is edit this text, so I'm just going to type in ED, enter. Select the 45 degrees. Hit the home button on your keyboard and then type in eight times. Okay. If you want this 25 to go back in the middle, remember that you can select a dimension, select the center grip, and then just move it up in between. Okay. So that should complete everything that we need to do on this drawing. I hope you enjoyed it, and once again, thank you for watching this.